That's right, a DW. Zoom in on the box. Official DW box. But there is a DW inside of these boxes, or at least three of these five boxes, even though this one doesn't have a DW logo. Anyways, this is a DW drum set. I've never owned a DW. I've changed the heads on a few DWs before. And then Bryce, who was behind the camera, his church has a DW collectors and I subbed for him once and I played on that kit for like 30 minutes. But other than that, I have very little experience with DW drums. So I wanted to see what's up. So here I have a DW. Now, this would not be possible without the help of Sweetwater. It may not look like it because there's no fancy Sweetwater tape on these boxes, but all of this gear was provided by Sweetwater. Well, wait, if there's no fancy Sweetwater tape, does that mean there's no candy inside? I mean, if not, I guess I could return them. You all saw me play on a $400 drum set, so I figured the next logical step was to play on a $4,000 drum set. And then after that, I'll play on a $4 million drum set. Good luck with that. So of course in this video I'll be using the DW drum set that we're about to open up and then also we have some Zildjian cymbals to open and also to record everything I'll be using all Earthworks microphones so if there's anything you see us open or anything you see me play or use in this video then hop down to the description and head over to Sweetwater. So does that mean we get to open the boxes now? Uh, yeah. When was the last time you played a 16 inch crash? Maybe when I was 17, so. So like 50 years ago? It, all right, first of all. I don't think since I started my YouTube channel, I've played a 16 inch crash, but Bryce thinks he has the special secret 16 inch hi-hat formula, and this is one of them. So stay tuned to see what the other one is. So this next box, Bryce and I have a bet on the shape of what's inside of it, and the loser has to buy dinner. First of all, Bryce has never seen one of these symbols before. So it's kind of going in blind. So that's why it looks like a, a weird amoeba thing. Yeah, let's see what this, this thing looks like. Two for two on the candy. <laughs> it has that hump on it. <laughs> Let the record show. We getting chimichangas, boys. How is that even possible? <laughs> for this finish looks very familiar for for two reasons. He liked my kit so much that not only could he not pick another kit, uh, he had to get the exact same finish as well. And the second reason is, I think this is the exact same. Oh, uh, let's, uh, let's, let's go on a journey. Oh, you mean that finish right there? So this is a Pearl Session Studio Select, also available at Sweetwater. <laughs> it's like the exact same wrap, so that's very interesting. So this is a 14 by six and a half DW collector's maple snare, 10 lugs. Uh, it has the DW mag throw off as well as the three position butt plate. I misspoke actually. This is a five position butt plate, which I didn't even know existed. So there's loose, kind of loose, medium, kind of tight and tight. Also, I'm just now seeing it has the DW I think they call it the true tune tension rods where basically there's like a million threads on each tension rod which helps it hold in tune better also helps with micro tuning so that is ooh, ooh. look at the uh the re-rings on this thing there's like quilting on it quilted maple re-rings i've never seen that before yeah so basically that's another thing i'm trying to figure out is are DWs worth it? Because again, I've never really played a DW. I've never owned one. But just seeing the snare, I can I can see why people choose DW. And if you're curious, the timbre note of the shell is an A. What is this? Welcome to your new DW dream kit. This is my dream drum set, apparently. Come back to that. I'm guessing these are the legs. Resonant four time legs. As opposed to batter legs. First of all, I feel like these are very ugly memory locks. You know, one can nitpick. And they look good because DW hardware is just so bulky. True. Again, DW Collector's Maple, same wrap as the snare. Uh, the note of this one is a C, and uh, this is the Maple VLT shell. Here we have the 12 inch Tom. Again, same specs. This note is an F, same show, same wood. Well, I forgot to mention the depth of the 10 inch, but the 12 is a 12 by nine. I typically prefer a 12 by eight and the 10 inch is a 10 by eight. I don't know, I'll be curious to play this kit. It's only an inch difference. So hopefully it sounds an inch bigger. 
floor tom. This is a 16 inch floor tom. I don't remember if it's 16 by 16. It looks 14 possibly, but same thing. Maple shell, VLT. I'm blind, this is not a VLT shell. It's an X shell, which uses diagonal grain to produce an even lower pitch shell. So good for a floor tom. There is some weird grain streaks going on in this one. And uh, for those curious, the shell is a C sharp. Should I open this now? Nah, save it for last. Ooh, I don't know. Like, look, a styrofoam. I mean, I guess it's a good thing, but it's annoying. You can use it to, uh... To sell all my non-DW drum sets after I've been converted. Ooh. Oh, and it's already got the internal muffling. That's nice. Dang. So now we have the bass drum. This is a 22 by 8 or 16 I think it's an 18 now typically I prefer a more shallow bass drum like a 14 or even a 16 I have one other kit that's 22 by 18 and uh, I mean it sounds fine but just the, the the size of it is kind of annoying to like carry around and move and set up but uh they sound great so we'll see about this one and this bass drum is a VLX shell which makes for an even lower pitch shell than the X shell so perfect for a bass drum the note of this one is a G sharp so if I was to tune those drums to the notes of the shells it would make this chord which actually if you take the snare out it makes a nice C sharp 7 chord but then you add it back in and uh things get a little spicy. When can I use a major seven sharp five chord? Whenever you play a DW collector's maple drum set. She's a little tight. Got them DW tolerances. All right, we got a sticker, this thing. Ooh, microfiber cloth, machine washable. And I guess these are the Tom memory locks. Some extra tension rods of various sizes. That's pretty cool. Look at all these keys. So this is a little hoop protector. We'll definitely put that on. We got a DW drum key a DW drum key drill bit and a DW drum key uh what do you, a keychain that's what it's called so that is very interesting I did not expect any of this when you pay so much for a kit it's uh, very thoughtful of them to include these Now the hi-hat combo is the 16 inch K custom special dry crash as the bottom. And then the top is a 16 inch K-Con crash.
So pros and cons of the kit. First and most obvious is it's expensive. It does sound nice, everything blends well together and the toms are very resonant. Everything was easy to tune. The snare gave me a little bit of trouble, but what's worse than that is it took forever to tune because of the true pitch tension rods, so I'm not a big fan of those. It did stay in tune a lot better than I expected. Typically in between takes, I'll have to like tweak each drum, especially the snare drum, but for this one, I tuned it, I played it and it was fine. These drums are very heavy, which from a playing standpoint is awesome. Everything feels super solid and you can really lay into the drum. But from a drummer's perspective who has to move it around and set it up, it kind of sucks. The day after I filmed the playing, I realized on the 10 inch tom that one of the lug screws had completely backed out and was rattling around inside the drum. So when I change the heads, I'm definitely going to replace that and check all of the other lugs. It's probably a freak occurrence, but it did happen to this kit. Another thing I didn't consider is the tom mounts use a thicker style arm than most kits, so I did have to buy new arms just for this kit. So would I recommend this kit or a DW in general? Yes, if you have the money, don't get me wrong, there are plenty of other cheaper kits out there that sound incredible, but with DW, there's a lot of innovation and drum technology that goes into these instruments, but do you really need all of that to have a good sounding drum? No, not really. But with that being said, they are built incredibly well and you can see the level of detail that goes into each process of putting this drum together and the thought that goes into it. So these are very high quality instruments. So let me know your thoughts about this kit and about DW down in the comments. I'd love to hear your opinion. Don't forget, you can check out all the gear I played in this video down in the description by following the links over to Sweetwater. But that's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.